the CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Can the leopard change his spots? Asked the prophet Jeremiah. And his own reaction, of course, was no. But, uh, you see, we live more than 2,000 years later. And today, we may not only change the spots of the leopard, but his flesh and his blood and his bones and brains as well. We can do this because we have been given a fantastic gift called science. But whether this is a gift of the Lord or of the devil has not yet been definitely determined. How do you like your new wallet, my dear? Oh, darling, it's beautiful. Let me get my papers and place them inside. And I've already done that for you, Eloise. No, Tom, I mean my driver's license, my social security they card. They are already in your new wallet. Tom, these aren't mine. That's not my license. But it is, dear. Well, look for yourself. The name on this is Mary Ann Williams. Of course. It's your new name. Mary Ann Williams. And my new name is Walter Williams. What, what do we need new names for? Because we died. Who... Who died? You and I. We were killed in a car crash. You know what you're talking about. Tom and Eloise Rutledge are dead. They have been changed into Walter and Mary Ann Williams. Our mystery drama, The Spots of the Leopard, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Anne Shepard. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines, and Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. I want that sinus medicine. Headache tablet? No, the sinus medicine that relieves headache and congestion. Internal sinus pressure and post-nasal drip. You mean Sinoff? Exactly. Compare Sinoff tablets with anything you've ever taken for sinus. No sinus tablet you can buy relieves more symptoms. Sinoff gives you a full dose of pure aspirin plus a powerful sinus drainer. Sinoff works fast to help sinus pain while you drain. S-I-N-E-O-F-F. Sinoff, the sinus medicines in the bright red box. Take when needed, only as directed. It's athletes versus MS. Meet baseball's Jotun Joe DiMaggio. Baseball's a game where you learn fast about teamwork. That's why I believe in athletes versus MS. Athletes from every sport, including John Havlicek, Muhammad Ali, Billie Jean King, have teamed up asking everyone to join in the fight against MS. Multiple sclerosis, the great crippler of young adults. There's no cure yet, but there's hope through research. Support your local chapter of the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. started over 100,000 careless forest fires. When will we ever learn? When will we ever learn? When will we ever learn? A public service on behalf of the Forest Service, State Foresters, and the Ad Council. Leonard Foster won the leading role in the Shakespearean play to be given by the local community theater. He was, of course, overjoyed. How could he know that this triumph would be the indirect cause of his death? Well, it's the way these things sometimes work out. You see, ordinarily, Leonard would spend his lunch hour out walking with a girl. 
or in a corner of the parking lot playing softball with the rest of the fellows from the mail room. However, lately he's been spending the hour between 12 and 1 sitting in the office and memorizing Cardinal Woolsey's famous speech to Cromwell, which is what he's doing right now, less than three minutes before he's to be murdered. Cromwell, I charge thee, fling away ambition. By that sin fell the angels. Love thyself last. Cherish those hearts that hate thee. Corruption wins not more than honesty. Still, in the right hand carry gentle peace to silence envious tongues. Oh, hello. Hello? Who is there? Oh, this is uh, Leonard Foster. This is Mrs. Rutledge. Is Mr. Rutledge about? No, no, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Rutledge and the plant manager have gone off to lunch. Oh, have they? Now, uh, Leonard, look, this is vital. Did they drive off in Mr. Rutledge's station wagon? Hmm? Did they? No, no. Uh, no, ma'am, they, they went by company limo. Oh, then I'm saved. Uh, Mr. Rutledge's station wagon is still in the parking lot. Oh, oh yes, ma'am, I, uh, I can see it just outside the window. Ah, uh -huh. do you drive? Oh, oh, yes, Mrs. Rutledge. Well, I'm at, uh... I... Well, she's the boss's wife. The right hand drawer. Should be. Oh, yeah. No. Where was I? To silence envious tongues, be just and fear not. Then, if thou fallest, thou fallest a blessed martyr. Oh, Cromwell, Cromwell. Had I but served my God with half the zeal I served my king, he would not in mine age have left me naked to mine enemies. That bomb was meant for me, Mr. Atkins. There can't be any doubt about it. Well, why? Why did you allow such a thing to happen? Look, we can't be everywhere all the time, Mr. Rutledge. You came we... to me. You said you, Tom Rutledge, you have a duty as a citizen. The underworld has been trying to move in on your industry. You have certain facts. I understand we... all that, Mr. Rutledge. Now, wait. Your testimony, Tom Rutledge, can place all these hoodlums behind bars forever. I said to you, I have been informed by certain letters, phone calls, even a visit to my office that it would be suicide for me to testify. We know all this, Mr. Rutledge. And when I told you about all those threats, how can I describe your reaction? It was it was as if this whole thing were an opera, and you burst forth into a glorious aria about how the full force of the assembled resources of the U.S. government would always be on hand to shield and protect me. Well, where were you when a bomb went off in my car this new? We're doing the very best we can. Your best isn't good enough. I believed you. I came forward. I testified. Now... This young fellow, this Leonard Foster, why was he about to drive your car? I haven't the faintest idea. Would he have any reason for being in your car? None that I know of. Where would he get the key to the ignition? I couldn't tell you. Oh, Mr. Atkins, this, this, this has been a very... I wonder if you'd excuse me. After all, there's really nothing I could tell you. In just a moment, Mrs. Rutledge, I have a question I'd like to ask you. To ask me? Yes. Just let me finish with your husband. Mr. Rutledge... Yes, sir. Did you keep a key to the car in your office? Yes, in my desk drawer. Did Leonard Foster know about it? Well, I don't see how. But obviously, he must have gone to your desk drawer and taken the key. Why? Well, I don't know. Couldn't even guess. Mrs. Rutledge... 
The switchboard operator at the plant says you phoned at about a quarter after 12. Oh? Oh, yes, I did. May I ask why? But you see, if, if Tom might be free for lunch. I know, dear. You had told me before you left that uh, you had this date, but I was sitting around the house. I was so lonesome. I forgot. I, I just picked up the, the phone. The girl at the board put the call through to your husband's office. You spoke to Leonard Foster because she heard him come on. Oh, yes. Yes, I, I, I did speak to the poor boy. And as far as we know, you were the last person to ever speak to him. Yes, I suppose I was. How did he sound to you? How? Oh, um, I don't know. All right, I'd say. Can you recall the conversation? Um, yes. I asked if Tom were there, and he said no. Tom had already gone to lunch, and that was all. And aside from telling you that Mr. Rutledge had gone to lunch, he said nothing else to you? Well, what would he possibly have to say to me? So then, for whatever reason, young Leonard Foster decides to drive off in your car, Mr. Rutledge, but the car is booby-trapped, and he becomes the accidental victim oh, of... please, please. All this is so upsetting, and, and you really don't need me for anything more, do you? No, Mrs. Rutledge. Uh, dear, uh, why don't you go upstairs and lie down for a bit? Yes. I, I think I'd better... Please, excuse me. Now, this is part of it. My wife is an extremely sensitive woman, and she Look, doesn't... I know she's scared, and I know you're scared, but I promise you, you're not going to be thrown to the wolves. Mm -hmm. We were almost bitten this noontime. As of right now, you're being guarded 24 hours a day. But how long can you keep doing it? Mr. Rutledge, all I'm asking is for you to have a little faith. <laughs> did. I also know what you didn't do. I read the newspapers. Now, we just have to let it rest a while. We'll get him. Maybe not now, but we will get Mr. Tom Rutledge. They cannot afford to guard him forever, and we are very patient people. I'll let you know what I want you to do when I want you to do it. Right. Oh, Monsieur de Polisard. Uh, Madame Rodlidge, may we come in? I thought you would want your commode. Oh, of course. Gentlemen, yeah. inside. Okay. And uh, where shall you have it, madame? Oh, uh, where do you suggest? Uh, beneath the painting. Uh, uh, set it uh, down, gentlemen. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's beautiful. It was ordained to occupy that precise place. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, okay bye. Uh, I must say, it was difficult to approach your house, Madame Rutledge. The police, they stop everyone. Oh, well, uh, my poor husband, he, his life is in danger. Could you do me a favor, Monsieur de Polissard? Madame, there is no other reason for my existence. I would like to give you a check. But certainly. Uh, for half the amount we agreed on and uh, cash for the balance. Whatever is convenient. Well, uh, I, I would just as soon my husband didn't know how much I pay. Uh, have no fear, madame. This shall be our little secret. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Monsieur de Poulistar. <laughs> our second little secret. Uh, I beg your pardon? Yes. It is our second little secret. Our first little secret is concerned with uh, that uh, most unfortunate occurrence yesterday noon. What did you say? What did you say, my dear Madame Rutledge? Or, oh, more properly speaking, what did you not say concerning that most regrettable episode? What are you talking about? You said in the newspaper account that you had called your husband's office from your home. Oh. We know that was not true. You had called his office from my shop. Oh. Uh, Further, I... It seems that both your husband and the police are completely mystified. 
They have absolutely no idea why that poor young man should have wanted to drive your husband's car. Now, uh, you could have enlightened them. You must believe me, Monsieur de Polissard. I, I couldn't mention this because... Well, I was so obviously the cause of that poor boy's death. He died because of me. I, I simply couldn't accept that kind of guilt. Mm. Please, Monsieur de Polissard. You said it would be our secret. What uh, is the real reason, madame? There uh, must be more to it. I assure you, monsieur. You place me in a most it... awkward position, madame. You see, you are withholding knowledge from the police. You are aware this is illegal. My motives are not evil. If my husband knew that I had asked Leonard to run that errand for me, he would be furious. He said he would divorce me if I ever did it again. Did uh, what again? If I ever used his employees to run errands or do work for me. Oh. I, I may have overdone it in the past. He does employ some very skilled mechanics, and I ask them to do various chores for me. He made me promise to put a stop to it, and I did. I gave him my solemn word of honor, so you see... Yes, my dear lady, I see. And, and that's why I simply couldn't afford to have him find out that I asked Leonard to do me a favor. My dear Madame Rutledge, you must have absolutely no fear. I told you this would be our little secret. Bread eaten in secret is sweet, says the proverb. But even the sweetest bread must one day grow stale. And secrets tend to grow heavy with age. And uh, sometimes they require additional people to carry them. In which case, they usually don't remain secrets. As you can see, we have a lot of work to do. And we'll get a good part of it done. And I return shortly with Act Two. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau on the metric system. You know, use of the metric system as a uniform system of measurement in this country is growing rapidly. But of course, you want to know how it will affect you, right? Well, take driving your car, for example. The kilometer will replace the mile in expressing distances. Right now, one mile is equal to 1,760 yards or 5,280 feet. Now, isn't it easier to remember that one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters? Your car's speedometer will also change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. So will speed limit signs on the highways. And again, the standard unit of measure will be the meter. And so when you order a tank full of gas, the liquid measure will be in liters, not gallons. For example, a fill-up of 16 gallons is equal to 60 liters. For more information on the metric system, write to Metric Information Office, National Bureau of Standards, Washington, D.C. It was the first time I can remember really going fishing with my dad. I'm sure I'd been with him before, but the first time I really remember it was wading downstream with him in an extra big pair of wading boots as he felt his way very surely along the, the stream bed and I shakily held onto the willows. And we found a spot where my dad lifted his finger to his lips and said, Shh, we don't want to scare the fish away. And then I remember that fish the biggest fish I'd ever seen in my life. And it was on the end of my line. And my dad, boy, was he proud. I'll never forget that as long as I live. Give your children everything. Give them your time. A thought from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The Mormons. few people will admit they tell lies. Because, as you know, truth is relative. And also, truth rarely gets you anywhere. After all, a politician who tells the truth seldom gets elected. And a lover who tells the truth usually spends his night alone. Eloise Rutledge takes the view that the important thing in this life is to get along. Be happy and not create any unnecessary problems. And so, 
If a bad peace is preferable to a good war, then certainly a good lie is better than a bad truth. Monsieur de Polissard, what do you want? What do I want, Madame Rutledge? Yes. Let's remove this, this mask of continental gallantry and... What and... makes you think I wear a mask? Well, I... I wish, Madame, only to be your friend, your ally. Well, uh, thank you, Monsieur de Polissard. Thank you. These words may sound strange to you, my dear Madame Rutledge, but uh, my dearest desire is to serve you. And if you wish to keep a certain secret, then I shall serve you by silence. Tom. Yes, dear? You're home early. Well, I, uh... We'd better have a long talk, Eloise. A long talk? About what? About our future... Well, that sounds serious. Yes. It's extremely serious. I just spent several hours with Mr. Atkins. The government man? Yeah. We, we found out something about that bomb. These are clever and tenacious killers. They want me dead. I must die as an object lesson to everyone else who might consider testifying against them in court. Even the government cannot protect me and you against them indefinitely. Oh, well, then, uh, what did Mr. Atkins say? That eventually you'll have to be murdered? Yes. That's... That's the truth. And we're just supposed to accept that? No, darling, we'll have to move. Move? We won't be any safer for it. These criminals have a, a nationwide organization. We'd be no better off on the other side of the country, e even uh, on the other side of the world. We would, because we will no longer be Tom and Eloise Rutledge. Who would we be? Hmm? Who would you like to be? Any ideas for a new name? Tom. Yeah, what the government can do for us is what it has done for people like us before. They'll help us establish a new identity. Well, what, what will we do? What will you do? A job is waiting for me. What kind of job? Where? We're well, teaching mathematics at a state college in the Northwest. I, I don't understand. Darling, oh. this is an opportunity to be born again. Start life all over. Live it differently. We'll have different names, different identities. Everything is being changed for us. Our social security numbers, credit cards, health and hospitalization data, you name it. My army discharge papers, every official document that has our name on it, our, our marriage license. What, what, what names will be on that? <laughs> Pick out whatever you want. What do you think? Oh, it sounds it's exciting. Wait till I tell Uncle uh, Alvin. No, no, you, you can't do that. Well, Uncle Alvin is my you only... You can't tell anyone. Why? Well, it's the way it has to be. But we can't just simply disappear. Why not? We have relatives. We have friends. What are they going to think? Well, they're not really going to think anything. They will mourn for us a while. Well, what do you mean, mourn? Oh, oh, I should have told you this out front. We, we're going to be dead. Dead? Yeah. In order to start this off in a most credible manner, we will have died in an accident. Oh, Tom. I'm frightened. I know. I know, dear, but unless I do it, I will be killed. It's my only chance. Sorry to be a few minutes late. It's, uh, it's all right. We had to arrange matters with the chief of the local police. Well, take a look. That's your new car. Like it? Oh, it's beautiful. I'll have the officers transfer your baggage from your old one to your new one. Uh, Frank, Smitty, start moving the luggage. Mr. Atkins, what's going to become of my furniture, my antiques? Well, they'll be part of your estate. As Tom and Eloise Rutledge, you had a will. But there isn't anyone in either my family or Tom's who uh, has the proper respect for a valuable antique. Couldn't we have taken... No, ma'am, we can't go through all this again, please. Now, 
You were driving late at night. You went off the road and the gas tank exploded. You perished in the crash and were consumed by the flames. Oh, God, that sounds terrible. The police and the medical examiner will authenticate all these facts. Uh, you fellows moved all this stuff? Yeah. Well, okay. Now, uh, here's a wallet for each of you. You are now Walter and Marianne Williams. Each wallet has your important papers, driver's license, credit card, social security number, everything you need. Douse that car with gasoline, fellas. Oh, Tom. Eloise, if, if you have any reservations... No, 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 listen, no, Tom. you folks had better start calling each other Walter and Marianne. Darling, that this won't be an easy thing for you to do. If you have any reservations, well, I, I, I could have been alone in that car. No, no, Tom. That Walter, uh, yes, remember? Th- Walter, Walter. My place is with you. My place is always with you. Okay, fellas. Roll her off the road. Anybody seen the bodies? Not enough left to identify. Well, what do you know about that? I don't believe a word of it. It's a plant. He's on ice somewhere. We'll find him. Yeah. People disappear. But nobody can disappear without leaving some kind of trace. Oh, I didn't know you were home. Well, where would I be, Tom? Honey, my name is Walter. In the privacy of our own home, I can call you Tom. But I'm not Tom anymore, and unless you call me Walter all the time, you'll forget and call me Tom when we're out. When do we ever go out? We could go out every night in the week. We could have a full social life. Sound and social life. Darling, there are some very fine people up here. Do you know the sole topic of conversation here? You have exactly two. It depends on the season. Not your being unfair. In the summer, it's horses. In the winter, it's skiing. And there isn't an antique shop within 200 miles. Well, now, that's not true. There are plenty of shops. Oh, sure. If you're interested in old branding iron... I'm talking about antiques. Well, it's not the East, I admit that. Look at my home. There isn't a decent piece of furniture. I should have known better. I should have realized that this would be no life for you. Oh, Tom. Uh, I mean, Walter. I'm sorry. The important thing is we're together. Together. That's, That's... all that I care about. Yes. That's the important thing. And it's just about the only thing we'll ever have, being together. I miss other things, too. The theater, the excitement of the big cities, the museums, galleries, restaurants. Oh, please. Don't, don't even mention Both the... of us. We were, we were brought up to live that way. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry, dear. No. Don't be sorry. I'll manage somehow. I wish I could buy you an antique. A chair and a table. Mm. (laughs) Nearest place where we could even hope to see anything that you would consider an antique. Would be San Francisco. Mm. I don't think it would be um, prudent for us to be seen in San Francisco. No. No, I guess not. I... I'm sorry, dear. I just have to live with it. Somehow. Oh, what am I thinking about? I can't. I shouldn't. I mustn't. Oh, it's crazy. Why is it crazy? Because something could happen. What? What could happen? I I know what I'll do. When when he answers, I'll hang up. Is 
Is anyone on the line? Or put it this way. When I return with Act Three, will there be anyone on the line? Will she do the smart, sane, sensible thing and hang up? Or will she... Well, she's a woman. And today's women's lib attitudes to the contrary, notwithstanding. History is replete with women who go against specific instructions. Bluebeard's wife, Pandora, Eve. Do we add Eloise? When you say but, you said a lot of things nobody else can say. A lot of things, like beechwood aging for 100% natural carbonation. That's how the Budweiser people age their beer. Nobody else does it that special way. But then nobody else is brewing the king of beers. I could tell you a lot of other things about Budweiser and why it's the largest selling beer in the world. But it all comes back to the Budweiser taste and that speaks for itself. Loud and clear. Hear it talking? Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. This is a routine gun trace request. Some 3,000 calls a month like this one come into the National Gun Tracing Center from law enforcement agencies throughout the country requesting information on guns used in crimes. Hello, this is ATF with the gun trace request. We check with both Have national and foreign manufacturers and forward the dealer's the name to the requesting agency. In some cases, we can do this in a matter of minutes. I will hold. I'm sorry to report that the owner said the gun was stolen about six months ago, and he forgot I'm to report Davis, it. I'm Rex Davis, director of the Bureau of That's Alcohol, right. Tobacco, and Firearms. Thank gun you. tracing yeah. is often the only means of solving a crime. If you secure your gun against theft, you make our job and that of your local police that much easier. Place a complete description of your gun with your other important papers. And if your gun is stolen, report it at once to the police or ATF. Remember... Your stolen gun threatens everyone. Let us say your name is Jean-Pierre de Polissard, and you are a respected dealer in antiques. About um, oh, a year ago, one of your very good customers and her husband were killed in the flaming wreckage of an automobile accident. Now... Today, you're sitting in your shop, and the phone rings. And you answer it. Hello? Hello, hello. Is anyone on the line? Uh, hello? Who is this, please? Uh, Monsieur de Polissard. Wait, I, I know that voice. But, no, how can it be? Madame Rutledge. Don't, don't say that name. Never say that name. You, you are alive. You must keep my secret. Certainly. Monsieur, how I miss your shop. And how I miss you, madame. Do you remember the commode? Could I forget? If only I could have something like it. I have my eyes on just a piece. It, uh will be available in several weeks. Oh, could you... Could you buy it for me? It is done. Remember, you must say nothing about my being alive. Your secrets are safe with me. Where shall I send this... My husband has just come in. I have to hang up. I'll call you again when I get the chance. Madame... <sighs> Yes? I'm, uh, I'm looking for Tom Rutledge. We were in Korea together, and he said, if you ever find yourself in or around New York, come see me. <laughs> so I've, uh, I've come to see him. Uh, you, you were a friend of Tom. Oh, I was better than a friend, a buddy. Yeah, uh, uh, won't you come in, Mr., uh... uh Sparrow. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, look, I, uh, I hope nothing's wrong. I'm sorry I must tell you this, but uh, 
Tom's dead. What? Yeah. Dead in an automobile crash. Oh. Yeah. Tom and Eloise, his wife. Uh, I'm Eloise's Uncle Alvin. <laughs> I inherited their estate. Tom dead. I, I can't believe it. I can't either. Old man like me, out living Tom and Eloise. I, uh, I'm sorry I intruded, sir. Uh, Say, you know, this is quite a layout here. (laughs) Practically every piece of furniture is an antique. (laughs) It seems to have a lot of class. Suppose the antique dealers around here were hit pretty hard when poor Eloise was killed. (laughs) You can see what a valuable customer she must have been. (laughs) Yeah, 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 I can see that. Well, uh... Thank you for your hospitality, sir. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry you had to come all this way out here for nothing. Hmm? Well, uh, maybe it wasn't for nothing after all. Mary Ann. Mary Ann! Ah, damn it, it's Eloise! Come in here, Eloise! What's the matter, darling? You tell me. Why are you so angry? Look at this. What are you talking about? This, this telephone bill. Well, what about it? You made a long-distance call to New York, to Westchester County. There's the area code, 914. Oh. Is that all you can say? Oh? But, Tom, this person is absolutely trustworthy. That is not the point. You're not supposed to be in touch with anyone at all for any reason. That was the agreement. Why, who, whom did you call? I, I, I called my antique dealer. Oh, good Lord. I can trust him. What does he know? Tell me. Well, I guess he knows I'm still alive. Oh. But, but he, he won't tell anyone. He promised. Does he know where you are? No, no, I didn't tell him. Does he know your new name? No. Eloise! Oh, oh, it doesn't matter. It's it's the way you are. You can't change. Tom, please. You simply cannot keep your word. I I can't become angry about it. It's it's a sickness with you. Darling, go back home. But this is my home. Go back east where you'll be happy. They... They don't want you. They want me. I'll I'll take off. Go somewhere. They'll never find me. Tom, please. I, I don't know what gets into me. But whatever it is. Darling, we can't live with it. But I, I can't live without you, Tom. So whatever it is, I'll fight it. I won't give in to it, in, to myself anymore. I, I won't, Tom, please. This time, believe me. All right, darling, all right. I'll try to believe you. But, darling, you'll have to call me Walter. Hello? Monsieur uh, Polissard. Madame. Uh, uh, I don't have uh, too long to talk with you. Did you find me? Madame, uh, I found you a gem exactly uh, like the other. And the same price. Could you send it out here? Of course. I don't want my husband to know I got it from you. Easily remedied. I shall ship it to a friend in San Francisco. He will send it on to you. You can claim you saw it advertised out there. Well, I, I think I can get away with that. Uh, what is your address? No, this, this is an absolute secret. I shall guard it with my life. All right. You send it to Mrs. Marianne Williams, care of Western State A&M, Barrett. Wyoming. Uh-huh. And please keep it secret. Uh, my dear madame, it is our fourth secret. Mr. Atkins, uh, uh, I'm Eloise Rutledge's uncle. Uh, you remember Tom and Eloise Rutledge? Yes, I do. Uh, are they really dead? What do you mean? Hmm. Why couldn't you answer that question, yes or no, Mr. Atkins? Because I'm not sure I understand that question. Well, let me draw a picture. A week ago or so, man rings my bell. Says he's an old army friend of Tom's. Do you follow? Yes, sir. Yeah, you should. It's simple so far. And he, he asks about Tom. 
didn't know Tom was dead. Uh, that doesn't raise any suspicions. Now, here's where it gets complicated. I see this fella's picture in this morning's paper. Here it is. Same person. And his name's Paul Sparrow. And he's supposed to be a notorious gangster. And he was asking about your nephew? Uh, I notice you didn't say my late nephew. No, I haven't said anything at all. But I do want to thank you for this very vital information. Ah, good day to you, sir. Welcome to the establishment of Jean-Pierre Polissard. Well, 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 if it ain't Benny the Frenchman. Ah, hello, Sparrow. And look at you. <laughs> New racket? I have gone straight. Is this stuff on the level? Or uh, did you hammer it out in the back room? I uh, told you, Sparrow, I have gone straight. All the way. Hey, well, uh, <clears throat> I'm looking for a dame. <laughs> Aren't we all? Uh, she'd been a good customer of yours uh, before she died. If she died. That is quite a description. <laughs> Her name is, uh, was, uh, Eloise Rutledge, or Mrs. Tom Rutledge. Uh, I read in the papers a year ago. She got killed in a car crash. Uh... What is on your mind, Sparrow? The oh, same thing that was always on your mind, Benji. Squealers. I remember how you always hated squealers. And that's her husband. He was killed, too. Yeah, that's what I said in the papers. I warned him. But he's already dead. No, no. The feds got him stashed. So I figure maybe she's been in touch. Why? To buy some antiques. That would be okay, but uh, I have not heard from her. You haven't, huh? Uh, tell me, why'd you just cover that piece of paper with your hand? Yeah, but what are you talking about? Uh, you didn't even know you were doing it. Uh, I uh, just had to write something down. You let me see. Uh, just a customer's name. Uh, look for yourself. Marianne Williams. How come you got a customer all the way out in Wyoming? She likes antiques. You know what I'd like to bet? That this Marianne Williams is Eloise Rutledge. You would lose. Well, it's worth the trip. You want to waste your time? Go ahead. Look, I trust you, Benny. Is she or ain't she the dame I'm looking for? She is not. Okay, pal. That's the last word. Hold it, Benny. <laughs> what? Put that phone down. When did you come back? You're getting careless. I come back to see if you was going to phone her to tip her off. This is a business call. Hand over the phone, Benji. Oh. If it's legit business call, hand it over. Now, come on, that's good. Hello? Hello? Oh, uh, ma'am, I, uh, I think maybe I got a wrong number. Uh, can you tell me where I reached? Yes, this is Barrett, Wyoming. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <sighs> it's the truth, Benji. I'm really sorry. Sit down. What is it? You told me you saw the ad for this antique commode in a San Francisco paper. Well, yes. Mm -hmm. Would you have kept the ad by any chance? Uh, no. No, I don't think mm -hmm. so. Let me tell you why I don't think there was an ad. What do you say? Now, wait, I haven't said it yet. In the bottom drawer, I saw an old and faded sticker. Do you know what it said? De Polisard's Antiques, Larchmont, New York. Well, uh, maybe he uh, did own the antique originally, and then he sold it to this dealer. About uh, who... a month ago, you called him. I did? Mm-hmm, and at that time, you swore to me that you didn't give him our new address. Well, I didn't. Did you call him since? 
Oh, um... Did you call him since to tell him where we were living? Oh, darling. Did you? <laughs> You're making it sound like, like the... Did you question. call him? Yes. Oh. You know what we have to do now, don't you? No. We have to get out of here as quickly as we can. Why? But it's, uh, suppose the Polisar does know. You can trust him. That's right. Well, there was a guy that was aces. Who are you? Don't move. Oh, Tommy's got a gun. Well, nobody can say your wife don't know this. Uh, well, what, what, what are you going to do? What do you think he's going to do? Oh, no. Please. Now, don't feel bad about Monsieur Polisar, as you called him. Wasn't his fault. Besides, he's dead. Hey, look, if, if you shoot us, people are all around on campus and, and they'll hear the shot. Not with this. It's a silencer. It'll just be a couple of little pop-ups, that's all. You're covered, Sparrow. Oh, my my oh, suggestion oh. is for you to drop the pistol and walk out the front door. Well, well that sounds about right. Drop it. Oh, oh Mr. Atkins... Oh, Tom, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. You folks will just have to do it again. You can't stay here. Eloise, I... I don't know if I can go through it again. Let them get me and get it over with. Oh, no, darling. No, 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 trust me. Trust me. I really learned my lesson. Eloise, can I really believe you? Yes, darling. Yes, this time... You really can believe me. Well, we'll never know if he can or not. When our stories are over, they're over. What happens after our third act curtain descends has to be another story. And I shall have another story for you when I return in just a few moments. If you're a high blood pressure person And your doctor says there's no doubt about it Then he's prescribed a medication But you're kind of hesitating Cause you feel pretty good without it Don't hesitate, get well, get with it Stay well, stay with it Though it might have to be for the rest of your life Chances are that it will be a healthier life Get well, get with it National High Blood Pressure Month is a good time to find out if you are a high blood pressure person. Get well, get with it. Because there are some 23 million people with high blood pressure in the United States today. If you do have high blood pressure and medication has been prescribed for you, then remember this advice. Get well, get with it. Stay well, stay with it. A message from your heart association. delicate balance between a lie and the truth. What is it? It's an entire dimension that is neither true nor false, but something somewhere in between. It's a place of shadow and mystery. And let us say it's that never-never land where the leopard, and indeed all of us, try to change our spots, or whatever. Our cast included Anne Shepard, Russell Horton, Gil Mack, and lay on Johnny. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I kept getting smaller and smaller. The me part of me. Do you think I'm losing my mind, Frank? Oh, no, no, no. Don't ever think like that. I, I know what it is. And I wish you'd tell me. Just so I won't keep thinking maybe I'm going mad. It's my stepmother. Your stepmother? It isn't the house. I was wrong about that. She uses the house, that's all. I don't understand. She's in there, Laura, in her house. Her house. They left a lot of my stepmother unburied. You're it. The thing that wants you as its living agent is what they left behind, unburied. Frank. When you're in that house, Laura, whenever you're in that house, you are my stepmother. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Sinoff. 
the sinus medicines. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Mm-hmm.